ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the race day friday man it's been a minute since i've done one of those i'm sitting on a bunch of content ladies and gentlemen i am i am but anyways welcome back to the ribo youtube channel and if you're new this is where we ride fast we ride smart but we ride bold and this here is npr tuesday morning be there like 6 45 westchester parkway by lax um <clears throat> i'm jumping ahead on some episodes man um i think this here this episode this was just this past tuesday and um i think there's a lot to learn in this episode and please twitter thumbs youtube comments critics that stuff doesn't phase me go ahead put it all in the comment um but i'm only talking to those that are trying to get better um that are maybe new um or maybe those people that they thinking about getting into crit racing please forgive me for the sun being in our face we're going through a little time change man and uh is blinding me this is the first lap it's a up and back u-turn um and if you haven't noticed there's about five riders already with a little break going so <clears throat> man and they had some hitters in there eric anderson wesley from uh methods to winning and uh, i definitely wanted to go and get in that so pretty much if you're on my wheel right now I'm dragging you with me. I wanted to go to this group here because this small group needed to get to the breakaway. But as I pull up, I mean, I'm going 30 by myself and they're not carrying the momentum that we need. So I just kept pushing. Um, why not just work on some solo and some TT? Um, again, I didn't like get out the saddle and sprint. so. Whoever wanted to get on the wheel could have just got on the wheel. I was going to bridge across by myself, or at least try to. But I did bridge across. <clears throat> um, and this is going into a slight, it's not a heavy headwind. Um, like later in the day, it would be a strong headwind. Um, but we're facing the beach. So that wind facing me right now, I mean, it could be strong for a solo rider. But... Um, I, end up, I end up bridging across. As you can see, you got Eric Anderson, Wesley, um, and then like three other strong riders. So this did kind of like, I'm not going to say it hurt me, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it kind of hurt me a little bit. But I knew I was like, nah, I got to stay with this as long as possible. And uh yeah, they almost rode away, but you know that old old school '90s episode, Saved by the Bell. Yeah, this was I think a a Saved by the Light, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy got saved by the light, but it was a good attempt. That is my first attempt of bridging across. Um, I think I do three bridges in this uh, on this day. Um, but yeah, so we got the, like I got saved by the light and, uh, yeah, I think I was feeling, I didn't have heavy legs. Like normally during the race season, uh, my Mondays was off days and then I would come straight to NPR. But, um, like that's like waking up a Kickstarter on the legs on a Tuesday and, and knowing that it's about to be a hard day. Um, but this specific week on Monday, um, I did some climbing, uh, I did above like 3,500 feet of elevation. And, um, so I came here and was feeling kind of good. I always come into NPR or this sign of town, which is in Santa Monica or LAX. I stay in South Pasadena that's a good 20 miles. So Anytime I'm coming to a group ride, I'm doing 20 miles before I even get there. I don't have to, I could just drive, but 
I choose to <clears throat> use it as a warm up, use it as collecting mouths and and not really overdoing it. Like I don't go really hard. Depending on, you know, the group for that day, if we're just gonna be chilling. Yeah, I'll smash it like by myself. That's just me working on things that I need to work on. Um but yeah, so 20 miles then start the group ride and then I got to do another 20 miles back so it is what it is if I get dropped I get dropped I'm not worrying about it I come here just to put in some work put in some exercise actually work on things that you know a lot of other riders don't really work on like breakaways or you know bridging across um and you know, I just try my best, man. So this is the start of the lap, the original start of the lap. So we're going into lap two right here. And again, it's just a up and back. Go down, come back. <clears throat> so again, this is like a slight tailwind, very light. Um, man, this sun, <laughs> the sun was beaming strong. It was beaming strong, man but it should rise up just a little bit. So I think here, I was just in the back of the group. I don't know if this is the back, I'm not too sure, but I was just chilling. I know some riders already got popped off. Um, and in uh, NPR, it's, if you get dropped, it's okay to cut across the course on the other side, wait for the peloton, the peloton. If there's a breakaway, let the break go. But it's okay for you to hop right back inside with the peloton. So there's gonna be <laughs> a lot more riders jumping in. Uh, like I said, that first lap was, they came in hot. So, Yep, and then you just jump right in and try to hang on as long as you can and you just do your best. You come out here and you ride and you just do your best. That's all you can ask of yourself um, is just do your best. So right now I see a little gap opening and I can't stay back here. And so I knew I needed to kind of move up a little bit more I think we might be coming to another light. I'm not too sure. <clears throat> oh, and the light was red and then it turned green. That's why. But I already got the feeling that, you know, some of these riders right here are tired already. So <clears throat> my man right here in front of me, he moves up or I guess he tries to. No, he moves up. Um, and one of the things that I've been learning is keeping my momentum. So I just don't stay behind the homie T. I just kept pushing because I'm carrying my momentum and I'm moving up some spaces. I see Wesley right here. Do I get in front of him? Uh, no, I'm on the side of him. I'm on the side of him. Right here in the white is my coach, Anthony Freeman, um, who's been really getting me strong and keeping me fast. Be up in the gym with him, in his gym. So, so I think he goes, take off in the front. Who is this? This is Eric Anderson right here. You ever heard of this man? He rides with Sharon Smith. Eric Anderson is strong. Really strong. So, <clears throat> so like I said earlier on the first lap, it was him and Wesley in that break. They could have just soloed away. Speaking of solo away, there's going to be a pivoted move where I think it was, I was pulling and as soon as I hit the chicken wing for somebody else to come through, 
um, you're going to see a rider kind of like take off. And him and another rider, they solo away. So good props to them. Good kudos to them for staying away. I just don't think there was a lot of effort in the peloton of bringing them back. So it is what it is. But, man, if you're in L.A., you come visit, or if you stay in L.A., come to NPR, man, before it get extremely cold. <laughs> come before it get cold. Um, NPR is year-round, um, except for rainy days. Um, but other than that, it's every single day of the year. <clears throat> so... Right now I'm sitting in this in this wind and I just noticed my man right here just let the wheel go for Eric Anderson. And I'm like, but he flicks me through and there's a gap. So again, the shadow from the sun is my friend. So I'm gonna bridge across to my coach Anthony. Whoever's on the wheel, we can keep going. So I think this is where um, I was pulling. And then as soon as I chicken wing, the pivoted move of the day, uh, the man just solo away. I'm doing a good hard effort, 28. And there he goes, two people. Oh, well, five people. But eventually he solos away. Don't know how, but he solos away. No, I do not have my power stats up. Um, it's the off season. I'm choosing not to show all of that. Uh, shout out to my boy T right there. Um, but nah, I'm not. I'm choosing not to show my. You can see the speed all you want. But my power, man, it's the off season, so gotta do my own training, man. And if I'm trying to get better, can't be showing all them stats, man. So I think we come to another red light. Oh, turn green. Right when it turned green, I'm like, shoot. I left this gap open. But oh, this is where they let the two people go. Because if you look straight ahead, it's all because of some stupid light, man. But it's cool. So I do got, like I said, more content. I got Montrose. Um, I have that content there. Um, and I'm going to be still doing some more Montreal stuff. So, And I still got more races, um, sanctioned races that I haven't posted. So subscribe to the, to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. And uh, just stay tuned for those. I'm going to try to drop those. Um, trying to put out some more content. Um, I got a... Hmm. Some new wheel sets coming <laughs> So I'll be doing a video on those soon As soon as those come in And um, yeah, just, just, It's the off season man So I'm trying to not wind down But just chill Keep riding, stay, you know, stay healthy Stay fit um, I'm still on the slightly injured list I'm about Good 70% healed um, I'm not going to be a fully 100% healed until like probably the beginning of November. And from there, I got to figure out how to strengthen my shoulder and stuff even more. I'm slowly doing it now without really doing too much pressure. Um, and I was, I end up, for those who don't know, uh, our state race, Manhattan Beach, I end up getting crashed out from behind. Um, and I had a third degree shoulder separation. I didn't break any bones, but 
you know, the tissue, all three were torn and my arm was just hanging. So um, I'm just blessed and happy to be back on the bike um, to be able to put in some effort. Um, yeah, went through some stages mentally with that. So it's all good. I'm back on the bike. I'm not worrying about it. Move on. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> Got to strengthen up the arm. So this is where I believe the riders took off. And again, I did a, two bridge attempts already. I'm choosing not to. Um, the thing about it is sometimes you got to, <clears throat> in races, pick your battles and certain things. Uh, one way of doing that is literally not pulling through and dragging somebody with you. You're just forcing them to do the work. My coach went up the front. I don't need to do no work. I'm cool. I'll, I'll let him win. I don't care. But if you got teammates, it's the same thing. You don't chase your teammates back. So on the song. Um <clears throat> At this point, they try to, these two try to put on a little effort to bridge across. Just have, you know, hop on the wheel, put a little effort, get right back on the wheel. Um, so, and that was my way of kind of forcing them to, to work. Um, either way, you either going to bridge across or you're going to pull people with you. So, you're still spending, you know, enough energy um, on doing some type of work. So, yep, I think they were coming to a, a light. Another light. We always we kind of, we slightly been running into this light, but normally this light stayed green for us. So, <clears throat> Eric Anderson, he goes up the front. And Eric Anderson knows that I definitely will work with him. I don't have a problem doing that. Um, <clears throat> but I think a lot of these writers, they see Bahati, they see Sharon, they see Eric Anderson, and they just expect that they're going to be the ones to pull back things. And it doesn't work like that sometimes. Um, them guys do get frustrated. You know, they'll do it. They don't have no problem doing it. They'll just take it as a workout. Um, but sometimes it's like if the field is in trouble and we need to bring a break back, we need to figure out how to work with each other. Um, but <clears throat> picking my battles. So Eric Anderson, I could tell he was already frustrated. So he comes back and, you know, just allow the other riders to work which is, you know, good on his part. I think Wesley is up there, so he has his teammate. He don't even really need to do anything at the moment. This is three laps. So NPR is five laps. Um, that probably give you roughly about probably 45 minutes uh, of a good solid uh, workout and trust belief. NPR is not slow. NPR is far from being slow. So just because you see, you know, you work out for 40 minutes, you're going to be working out a hard, hard 40 minutes. So <clears throat> I think I'm taking a drink of water or something, taking, tighten up the shoes. The pace is kind of slow. I'm um, going 24 miles an hour. Um, on Tuesdays, though, there's two stay, two levels. This is NPR is your in the morning, early morning, fast, fast, fast group. And lately, um, 6 p.m. the same day, same area. Um, West is considered called is considered Westchester Parkway. Uh, that's what it's called, and They've been getting a lot faster, and uh, that's at 6 p.m. Um, I don't know how many laps they do a warm-up lap, one warm-up lap, and sometimes four, four laps, full throttle. 
or five laps full throttle. So you can pick and choose if you get dropped a lot here, go to 6 p.m., work out over there, or you know, between your work schedule and stuff, you can't make it in the morning, you gotta drop the kids off, or you gotta just get to work, 6 p.m., you'll get the same type of workout here. Um, it's just this group here is just a lot much faster. But with Westchester Parkway though, because it is in the afternoon, they're seasonal. So when the time starts to really change, you know, this the end of the in the group ride season and then pick it up later in, in the year. So so far I have <clears throat> uh, here's another bridge across. Bridge across to this. Uh, she flags me through, and you know, out of respect, that's what you're supposed to do. And I keep my momentum. There's no point of me slowing down and try to slot in. These two here, you see in my shadow, nobody came with me. This is a good move. These two here are, are quite, you know, quite strong and. He's going to be a factor for me later into this race. Um, another thing that I kind of do is like pay attention to riders' body language on each lap. <clears throat> and what he's doing right now, he's not even flagging me through, and he's pulling by himself. I'm happy to sit in this draft until he flags me through. But what it does shows me that he's a strong rider, especially in this area. So again, he's gonna be a pivotal move for me. And at this moment right now, he didn't flick me through, but respect, I'm gonna come through and take my pull. Keep the same speed, try not to drop it. Right now we're going on uh, some small little descent, then we go right back up. <clears throat> and then uh, I flag somebody else through. So, um, but I don't go all the way back to the back of the peloton. Cause I can tell just right here, if I'm maintaining my pace that they're not going that fast. There's no need of me going all the way back. Man, I don't know why that man was riding, I mean, running on the side like that and seeing us come. So I think uh, probably like right about here. Oh, somebody, yeah, somebody put their hand on my back. So I'll just slot in. Good position to recover. We're about to get ready to bust a U turn and, you know, going into lap four. So, so in this area here, just if you ever ride in this, try to look back as possible for cars when busting a U turn. It's really hard because when you look back, the sun is like in your face. Uh, but just for the safety of everybody, we try to look back ahead of time just to see if cars are coming. And then also if cars is going um, eastbound. And uh, we wait for the car, we go around. Start it right back up. And this is lap four, so. It wasn't that big of a group and normally would be bigger. Um, <clears throat> I think the Los Angeles had a, a, a big heat wave. My man T dropped his chain. Um, I think he got back in. I'm not too sure, but, oh, he did get back in. Um, but he dropped his chain. I think it went on the outside towards the crank. 
um, and situations like that happen, um, just click the uh, your front chain ring into the small gear, small chain ring, and then slowly turn it. Um, but if it gets stuck, just pull over to the side, man. You don't want to break your chain and then you can't get back home. That's too much money for an Uber. <laughs> too much money for her uber so <clears throat> i don't know man today it didn't seem that fast like in this area right here we should be doing like 30 miles an hour that's what we normally do it's like 30 miles an hour so seeing it consistently between you know 25 and 28 that's too much of a recovery for me Like we're doing 30 now, but literally right after the U-turn, we kick it up to 30. So what do I do here? <clears throat> oh, a writer's on my right. Um, I think he allows me to go through. Normally, some people might not allow me in <laughs> to get the will, but I'm not for the fight nobody. So here's a pivoted move too. So I slot into the right. Instead of jumping behind Wesley, or I had to actually do it a little bit of an effort to get back onto the wheel completely. But instead, I just jump behind this wheel and, uh, yeah, make this ride of work. Because some people just won't work. They won't work. <clears throat> yep, I popped off. Same for to do this work. Not for to do this work, it's, it's just being patient. I mean, we're not even really going that fast. If we was going fast, if the pace was fast, then I probably would have pulled through because I know if if I'm tired, other riders are tired. If I'm not tired, other riders are not tired. So. Just go, I think, to the back or semi to the back. Just chill out, man. Just chill out. And I think around this time is when I actually thought about like sprinting today. <laughs> you know, um, I said, I'm, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and sprint today. So I definitely gotta be patient. Um, I gotta be smart about, you know, my efforts. Um, this is second to the last lap, half a lap to the last. And um, you do a big effort here, it will hurt you later. So I'm just trying to maintain it, balance it, um, and, and be wise. Because whatever effort I do, I want it to benefit me. Definitely want it to benefit me. Um, I have a race, the last race of Eldo. Speaking of benefits and being smart, I did a bad move and I'm definitely gonna talk about that. And it hurt me. It definitely did hurt me in that race. So there's not always, I'm not always gonna be posting good things or whatever the case is. Nah, I think you can learn from your mistakes as well. So look out for the, the last Eldo race. 
Um, and I'll be talking about that pivoted move there. And I definitely uh, learned from the from the OGs, especially Wesley. Wesley is uh, the second rider in front in the green and black. Um, I think here's another move. I don't know if I bridge across. Um, I think the homie Elijah, he allows somebody else to go. Oh, no, 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 no. So I was being patient, and I knew Wesley was going to eventually jump. And then right there, he jumps. And I'm like, cool, right on time. I'm going to sit on this wheel. Um, he can always he can go all the way around, or I think I go around him, which would be my third bridge across. So I look and see, and at this moment here, this is where I think I, I do the attempt to bridge across, I believe. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and jump it. Try to not take no riders with me. I didn't get out the saddle. And I think one rider came. I don't know who this rider is. I think it was either my coach, Anthony Freeman. But this was a, a definitely a good pivoted move right here too. But again, like the pace, it's not all that fast. And I think riders just caught up. Like normally, man, we'll be nothing less than like 29 miles an hour. This is the uphill. It's a straight uphill. So that's what I mean by <clears throat> being patient, using the right energy at the right time. Um, Eric, he flicked me through, you know, I'll take my pull, um, but I'm not going to smash it because we're going into the last lap and pretty much I need all my energy for this last lap. So I flick through and I know they're gonna slow down. So again, now I got a lot of energy to use for this last lap. Just being patient. But that move that I made, that's an effort that I'm willing to take coming into the last lap. Because if that pace was a lot faster, we probably would have stayed away going into the last lap. And if we didn't stay away, that means the group that was behind us had to put in a lot of work on the last lap to catch us. So now this is the last lap and <clears throat> everything about the last lap is always being patient. If you're in a race, you want to be patient. You want to keep yourself calm. You want to look around you, where you at in the in the peloton, or if it's, if it's a breakaway, where are you at? Like, are you in a good position? Because if not, then there's two efforts you got to do when it comes to the last lap, last lap. One of those efforts is actually sprinting in position. And then the second effort is sprinting to the line. But when you, if you're not in position, you're subject to fail and not win. And it's all because positioning can force you to lose. So right here, I didn't, I'm maintaining <clears throat> my pace my effort my power without really like i can bridge to that 
too easy. But why crank it up that hard just to bridge a 10 footer gap? And then we come here, we get to a red light that would cost me a match, um, an effort. I don't know why they ran this light. I don't know. I don't know why they ran that. That was weird. But it is what it is. Figure out what's going on and get back in position. Um, they did wait up, so they didn't take off. Uh, so kudos to them. Um, and we all back together. So I see Eric and Wesley. They're moving up in position. Because as soon as we hit this U-turn, it's going to get fast. I seen Elijah. He came to the back or somewhat to the back. <clears throat> and yeah, I'm choosing not to take the front. You can't take the front too early. Because towards the end, when we get to the last tip of the hill, it's a long sprint. You're looking at like 300, 400 meter sprint. Most sprinters, they only sprint 200 meters. If that, <laughs> they might just do 150 and they drop off. But it's a long sprint. So being patient and in the right position can definitely get you that sprint that you, you've been looking for. So if I go to the front right now, I mean, you can go to the front right now, do your pull, hit the U-turn, come off. I mean, at least you did your pull. But do you have the recovery of hopping right back in? Because, again, for us, if this is another day with, you know, a little bit more riders, it would stay consistent at 30 miles an hour. So you taking a hard pull on the last lap, better have a good recovery and hop right back in. We smart, we wait for the, for the cars to go. Safety first, man. Safety first. So, half a lap to go, right? At this point right now, I'm looking at riders of where they're trying to position themselves. And I'm looking at certain riders. Who's going to be my will? Half of this. Half of this, half a lap. I told you. I'm right back on this man's will. <clears throat> I know the fact that this man's strong. And if I was to yell up, 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 he's going to move up. So this is probably the best decision of a will to be on. Um, because being too far front could cost me energy. But I want to get dropped off right where it's time for me to get ready to sprint and get dropped off easily. So I'm staying patient. I'm still looking ahead, making sure there ain't no, no gaps opening up. But I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to be patient. Again, looking for other riders. <clears throat> Seeing what they doing. Like my man to the left, he's spending a lot of energy just to get to the front. On the uphill, on top of that. <laughs> on the uphill. I will only do that if there was a gap. 
That means I'm bridging to that gap like I have to. So we got one more hill we're going to go up and get to the top of that hill that begins the long sprint. So at this moment, as soon as we get past this light, I know in my mind, I'm going to yell up, 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 up for this rider right here to move up to the front. So I yell up, 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 up just to help me get into position. I said steady, steady, but he goes up because he sees the gap. Cool. Go ahead. That just forces more riders to get on his wheel and allows me to slot in. So now <clears throat> about three riders at the front, they're going to pop off. I already know. So I'm only got to deal with Eric Anderson and because he's in the front, he's not going to go for a sprint. Then I got Elijah. Elijah is working for the rider in the green. And then my coach Anthony is in front of me. So if you notice, I'm not directly 100% on this wheel because <clears throat> I have a kick. And what I mean by that is I want to speed into the draft and pop around. So this is a good move. My coach pops off and I got this gap. Now I can speed up into the draft because it's not that fast. And then I just snap right here, boom. I have so much momentum that I'm carrying like I nearly get up to 40 miles an hour, nearly 40 miles an hour. Then I kick again, only because I seen the shadow. And then that's how you take the win. Be in the right position, y'all. So if you like what you've seen, follow me on Instagram, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And remember, ride fast, ride smart, but ride both. Catch y'all in the next episode, y'all.